Hello and welcome everyone in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. This being the special one, today we are recording, uh, this is the 100th episode of Researcher Celebrity and we are fortunate to have Dr. Y.D. Gore with us for this conversation. Always 100 is special in any field, science is no exception. We complete today the century and for, to celebrate this, we have a sanitarian, a role model, a researcher, a true celebrity, Dr. God, sir, with us. A little bit about Dr. God for general uh, audience because Dr. God does not need any introduction. He is a legend in the field of agriculture in India and abroad also. So Dr. God has done his bachelor's in life sciences, master's in botany with focus of, on plant pathology, and then pursued the PhD also in plant pathology in soil microbiology also. Dr. God has moved all over the world just for the research purpose, starting from Prague in uh, Czechoslovakia where he was a WHO fellow and then New Zealand for NRAC fellowship, starting from a assistant for PhD and then pursuing the PhD senior assistant and how sir has retired from principal scientist and professor at IARI, we will witness the journey and I'm sure that most of you will be benefited and will get the guidance from this conversation which is upcoming. So for, for with this, I will say welcome Dr. God at the platform and we thank you for taking time out to share the journey. Thank you, Dr. Raja. So, sir, we always start our conversation that how and when you decided to become a researcher. Well, uh, before that, uh, how I started my interest in this, let me tell you first, uh, my father moved from Jodhpur to the village where we had a farm and uh, in the district branch here. And we were, I was, I started my schooling at that place. And uh, there were a lot of uh, my friends and students who were studying in our village school as well as nearby schools. Uh, after passing the eighth class, most of them took art side and I took science. I was the only the student from my village to pursue science in 9th and 10th. Then for uh, going to first year and second year, uh, again, uh, that the school was too far for me, about, about 18 kilometers. And uh, the terrain was quite difficult, which I realize now, not at that time. Uh, I think 12 kilometers used to be a, a kacha rasta, which is just a dusty land and uh, six kilometers was only road. So 18 kilometers one way I used to go to the college uh, to study science. And I was the only uh, candidate from my village to go to such a far place. There used to be forest about five to six kilometers. But since I was interested in science, though of course it was agriculture college, but there was science discipline also there. So I studied two years there. Uh, that was one of the famous agriculture college of UP, one of the oldest also. But I studied there science first year and second year. And at that time, agriculture was very important. And those who used to complete the BSc in agriculture sciences, they used to get a position of block development officer. My father also, once I passed my first year, he told, you can also switch to agriculture. But our uh, professor of chemistry was such a learned man. He was a PhD from Allahabad University. And he used to say that uh, this uh, chemistry is a, is a Havra chemistry. So mm -hmm. we got some some inhibition about agriculture at that time. And uh, uh, have a, uh, developed a fancy about science only. So I continued science instead of taking uh, agriculture. In spite of that, agriculture has much more uh, scope at that time. So I continued and finished my 10 plus 2. Then again was a problem because there was no college nearby to pursue that one. In that college, there was only 
science was up to 10 plus 2. Of course, the agriculture was up to postgraduate level. So uh, I moved to Jodhpur, where my relations were there. And I studied BSc science there, botany, chemistry, and zoology. And uh, after passing the BSc, uh, there was choice I can go for zoology or botany or chemistry because I succeeded in all the three departments to get the access. It was the first time Rajasthan used the mm -hmm. departments of, of University of Rajasthan. And um, I was more interested in, of course, at that time, geology. That was my, because um, unfortunately, I could not go to medical science because of some financial reasons. But my always tilt was towards uh, geological science, animal sciences. Uh, but my professor, who used to, uh, he was rather uh, very, very, uh, always used to appreciate the postgraduate classes that there is one boy in VSC. His uh, practicals are so fine. And so he used to appreciate. And he told to the professor, only there were nine seats at that time, 10 seats totally in MSc, that that boy is to be certainly taken. All India competition that was there at that time. So since he has spoken already about me before my asking, I applied for the position. I, I joined Botany because I used to uh, take the decision by heart, not by brain. So mm -hmm. I joined Botany and uh, sacrificed those other two subjects. I continued there for MSc program. And in the MSc program, the, the professor, because it was a new department of uh, University of, uh, University of uh, um, Rajasthan, uh, the one of the most renowned professor, uh, which you may, may not be knowing, uh, Professor C.V.S. Subramanian. He was a student of Professor Sadasivam at uh, Madras University. And he was uh, uh, Professor in the IRA earlier. And he was uh, nominated to join the post of Professor. And he joined the University of Rajasthan as a Professor and head. So at the age of 37, he was uh, DSC. He had a FNA. All the awards he had. And he was writing monographs. So, and because of his research acumen, we got so much interested in research. So, after passing the MSc also, I got an opportunity to join bank services without my uh, much efforts. It just worth it. And that time, I, uh, the bank officer used to get 400 rupees. But uh, we, I declined that and I joined uh, research. At that time, there was no fellowship. Uh, so I joined the research then because I was interested in research only. And that time they used to give only 150, uh, 150 rupees to research tents at that time. Though, of course, uh, after three months, the salary was increased to 250. Uh, so that made me interested in research, so which I continued whole life. And I still love to do research. Of course, nowadays I'm doing a administration in, in education. But that is my still enough for that. So, that so sir, my <clears throat> yeah. So we have so many questions for you. So let's start from the first one. So the reason behind making a decision to do a PhD at the time when not many people used to think, especially yes. with the challenges, as you mentioned, walking 18 kilometers. And then on top of that, once you did or accomplished that, now then there is a very good statement of yours. I would like to tell all the audience that just sir mentioned about taking the decision by heart, not by brain. And obviously you can see if you are denying a perk of 400 and joining 100, 150, 200, 250, obviously it's not even comparable, lesser than half or something like that. But these things shows that how passionate you are about your beliefs, your interest. So, sir, let's come back to the question about the idea that not joining a formal job, but a PhD. No, I told you that uh, we were so much fascinated about research because of our professor, C.V. Subramanian. And uh, at that time, there were, he used to call the... Uh, visitors from America also, who were also well-known in their field and, and they used to be considered authority in their field. They used to visit. So we were so much inspired. Uh, I think uh, uh, 
the whole of our group at that time, now after the nine students, all were interested in research and everyone joined the research only. This was, I think, the impact of the it, our teacher only. I give to the whole credit to him for that purpose. My father was tortured against with a, why don't you go and join the lecturership because that was paying much four hundred rupees at that time, and you are joining the job of hundred fifty rupees and all those things. So, but uh, I told that uh, I am interested in research only, and my professor also advised that uh, join the research. And uh, even after my joining research, I got the offers again from some of the colleges, and they used to come to my home. I asked my boss that can I go. He told me. The teaching you can do after 30 years also, but research you cannot do it. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole thing which my I went for research. I loved doing research. I was really mad after this. So after we can research, totally see the fascination of you. And I'm sure that the way you got fascinated by your uh, supervisors, your mentors, you have done the same for the uh, so many generations of researchers, I can say, because one of the things which often come in these conversation at this platform, the role of the mentor, your supervisors, they actually give you the path and you, because they see your interests, how you enjoy being in lab, doing your research and how engrossed you go, goes into it because sometimes as we have seen biology in biological sciences, the research takes a toll on, you know, uh, students, especially during their PhD time or at uh, that being said at any point of their time, because sometimes they have to spend longer hours, late nights in the lab for their experiments. And just one video before uh, we had uh, Dr. Binsi Anujan, who also explained the role of the mentor, because she said, if I was not mentored by Dr. Pankaj Gupta. She might not have even pursued PhD or research per se. But someone was there who was seeing that how interested she is in research without even realizing that they really want to do this. And now she's a successful scientist in the United States. But the point which you also uh, you know, said about how your supervisor says that, okay, you can do this something after 30 years also, but this is the time when, because they have seen you enjoying your research. So now we will talk about the second phase of this conversation. Okay. Uh, may, may I just, may I just interrupt you about this? Uh, yes, I would please. Like to add, here, add here. Yes. Sir. Uh, of course, my, uh, starting from my college days, from first year, second year, third year, fourth year, I was always good, rather, I, I used to top in practicals. Mm -hmm. Practical was, Exercise was used to be, which is the teachers used to appreciate mm -hmm. the geology or the physics, and even external examiners used to mm -hmm. say, if there is any boy, uh, he's he. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of things I never used to get such a high mass. Uh, mm -hmm. Appreciation I used to get all all the time because now getting mar in India, India is a different thing. So just for it, one second. Eh? This is one of the things which we always aim at Researcher Celebrity. The acknowledgement, what we see is lacking in, uh, especially for the researchers. And as sir said, acknowledgement is so important that sometimes it can actually defeat accomplishments. You might be very accomplished, but without acknowledgement, you feel that void in there. So, sir, that is my next question for you. That uh, the just uh, Dr. Raja, uh, yes, the professor who from whom I got inspiration, he never told us that you go for research and all these things, of mm -hmm. course. But the way he, he used to work and we used to hear about him, that made us interested in research. He never told you go only for research, not go for teaching and all these things. But uh, the way of his working made us interested in research. This was mm -hmm. not only me. By mm -hmm. all of the, the my colleagues and mm -hmm. uh, for, for fellow students. Of course, few did not join research because some other reasons, or maybe. Hmm? But most of these students joined the research only. 
So, sir, the next question is the journey of your PhD. When people, are, because of the infrastructures, the availability, the challenges were so different from what we see today. So if you can share something, uh, you know, from your uh, PhD journey experience. Well, PhD also, it was not easy at that time, uh, rather, uh, because the facilities were not that much. Uh, we you, we have to make all the reasons, everything we used to make is a methodology, books, uh, reading, all the things. So I never used to have the, the my PhD guide uh, told me only one thing that uh, uh, how a bacterial, uh, especially rhizobium on which I think, how the colony of that looks like that mm -hmm. on a petri dish. Beyond that, uh, whatever I did, I did myself. Only I found him that he gave me the full freedom. Mm -hmm. And he was always ready to you know, and sit with me for hours together. So I used to discuss with him. That was the greatest condition. The free hand which he gave, he never used to give me this, this do like this, do like this. I used to mm -hmm. know everything. I used mm -hmm. to discuss with him. I had to do like this. This is my research and I wish to follow him. So he used to always encourage and listen to me clearly. And he used to, in between, uh, criticize something mm -hmm. about him. The other person with whom he started first my, my research career, the first day he told me, Mm -hmm. That be honest in your research, whatever you do it. Yes. Uh, that was one of my lessons also. That uh, uh, the, uh, whatever we are doing, not, nothing manipulation. And the whole life I did it. Other, I believe the research who are manipulating, they are deceiving themselves and they are deceiving others also. There is no yes. point. Uh, uh, so this, this is the only thing which pursued. And, because of this only, I just tell you, Dr. Raja, that my all the students who did PhD under me, they remained researcher only whole life. They got fascinated about research. With my other colleagues, these students did PhD and joined someone you know, civil services, some other services like that. But my all these students, I'm happy that all are professors now nowadays. If you even have retired. But all remained a good researcher and they made uh, passed the name also. I could not, but they got it. But I feel most so proud that my students have done so well. So this is something which we always say that the mentor actually is the one who shows the path and sometimes walk with you so that you can reach to your goal. And as you mentioned, sir, that when you see your students becoming professors and, you know, doing the quality research, because these days we do have this issue of manipulation, of paper retraction, of so many things which I see adulteration or pollution in research. I th That is, again, uh, my personal thought. Uh, I would uh, ask to all the audience that you might have your own thoughts, but I always believe, as Sir said, that be honest with your research is one of the things which we always thought that it is for granted. Because people think that there is, you cannot be dishonest with your research, but what has been seen in the current scenario, that some of the researchers, for so many different reasons, but nothing can justify it. When you are, I how we see research as a worship. You cannot be fake in that. Either you do or you don't. So, sir, certainly, certainly. So how now I want to know your thoughts of, about importance of freedom to the students because when you were getting your training from your PhD supervisor and you have trained so many PhDs, what are the pros and cons of giving this freedom to the students that, okay, you just... Uh, plan your experiments and career and for troubleshooting you can come to me. Well, I th uh, in PhD program, I think that's the most essential part of it. Otherwise, uh, by spoon feeding, I know uh, our other friends who used to do PhD along with me, their supervisor used to say even this, 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 this is the experiment you have to do it. And after completing four years program, when they got a job and they told me very frankly, 
number very when you ask we are unable to make a project even to get a grant because we were just giving a spoon feeding but that was not in my case and uh, uh, that because uh, whatever i did i did myself even if i got a protocol from anywhere i used to work again study the whole thing everything not used to believe on it and um, unless i have made it my own notes made my own protocols and uh, for that reason dr raja even from some of my protocols in my research program uh, i was uh, better uh, uh, don't consider i am just saying a and proud but the americans also could not achieve that results which i could get it and i was considered expert there in us also university of hawaii and new zealand also for some of the protocols which i developed myself not by mm-hmm. having books or by someone else has told and this absolutely comes from no spoon feeding as you said and it is very essential to all the researchers who are watching this who are either pursuing their phd or you know planning to join a phd as a program dr t adak uh, always says that phd is a training it gives it trains you for the, your rest of your life and that's if right, you that's right. sometime if you did not get it the way it should be as dr god just mentioned that there should be no spoon feeding it is your independent project it should be like you should be the sole authority on it like you know everything on back of your mind at any time so you don't uh, have to uh, uh, yes sir yeah sorry sorry to interrupt you uh, please at the time uh, we have submitted thesis lot mm-hmm. of thesis used to get rejected mm-hmm. or used to come for revision but me and one of my friend was so confident about it no that no one can challenge that this uh, our thesis and just before submission i had to move to chakshalavekia for that reason my thesis was delayed when i showed my work at chakshalavekia they told this is work of two thesis why don't you submit one thesis here and one thesis mm-hmm. in india mm-hmm. but my supervisor did not agree for that or why mm-hmm. i would have passed uh, one degree there also mm-hmm. that thing so what i say I, in the phd at least there should be total freedom yes. otherwise the very purpose of uh, developing training the student will be defeated absolutely so now sir we will talk about the real life challenges of researchers in the field so phd is a very big chunk of it but once they earn their degree that's when real struggle comes so either they want to start up their own lab or they want to go for some fellowships and at the ultimate goal of a researcher is to start up their own lab for the training part we'll see that there is no formal training for any researcher how to manage funds for most of the researcher at least how to manage funds how to write grants during their phd so that they know that once they are they plan to set up their own research group or to join some group and how to get the fr- grants publications obviously is a very important role which we always say currency in research is publications but when they have got training in research performing their experiments they are well trained by the end of the phd but when it comes to time management or human resource management and then their resources for the lab for the equipments for so all, so all these things how you suggest to all these our viewers that how should they train themselves during the phd to learn all these skills which are required to establish yourself as a researcher or to start up your own lab dr raja very frankly in india one does not get the opportunity after immediately after finishing phd program because one has to join some of group they are not in, as independent scientist so already some lab already running lab you have to join 
one of the senior person will be working you will be one is one is working with some senior person but uh, and while working with a senior person you get and if you are a senior researcher is a able person you automatically day by day you learn how to submit the projects how to manage the labs and you automatically i think there is no no need of uh, getting a special training which mm -hmm. i think one has one requires in a country like usa but not mm -hmm. in india uh, mm -hmm. i think I, i didn't require i have submitted projects and got mm -hmm. success also but mm -hmm. uh, i think there was i didn't get any any time any formal training about it mm -hmm. how to uh, only that pro forma we got this is in this format you have to give the data mm -hmm. and uh, i i think i didn't find any difficulty in doing that one anywhere oh. okay and so now in, in, in uh, yeah. overseas also when i was there i also submitted the projects there everything without any project you cannot start a research mm -hmm. and also i didn't get any difficulty in that one so mm -hmm. uh, so, I so yes sir yeah so uh, now we uh, talk about the challenges of the field experiments because uh, what we are hearing like you sounds like a, a piece of cake research is a piece of cake if people will listen to your conversation they'll be very excited happy about it that it is easy so let's talk about the challenges of uh, field experiments when things are not working the way you want how you have walked your path and how you have trained the next generation to handle that uh, to be very honest dr raja nowadays uh, what i am seeing and uh, i am involved with the examiner or uh, some experts there i know that there is no dearth of money at the moment uh, researchers are getting enough but we were just hand to mouth rather the initial research at the time when i joined it uh, the institute for new at jodhpur and we have to fabricate the working tables by the uh, uh, this boxes which used to the instrument boxes is to get it convert into a uh, laboratory benches on that we used to conduct the research so everywhere it was a research only and the funding was so little at that time even till my retirement unless i got it the national publication i didn't have my own funds so that was one of the greatest constraint the whole life and uh, then uh, difficulty of getting students also because iira where i worked the number of the faculty were more than the number of students iira used to admit only three phd students in a year in a department and i suppose there are 10 faculty members and uh, most of the students uh, by proxy and all those will like to go uh, with whom one can do very easily the uh, phd get the phd and get out of the place not a person who is really wish to work and train the students mm -hmm. so that was one of the and your colleagues also accept a few one Uh, uh they don't uh, increase you appreciate they may appreciate you in the background but not in front or colleagues so there's always lack pulling there but mm -hmm. you have to when you have to ignore all those things if you are a researcher you are interested uh, i could survive whole life i could research not because of i got the promotions and all things due promotion valent time there's a lot of struggle positions and everything but by just remaining busy all the time with my work and benches also uh, mm -hmm. i didn't run about the people uh, to get this position and that position so i didn't have time also uh, uh, so i i remained busy in research only that was that was the only motor in spite of all the odds i used to try to work what are the funds we used to get under that constraint uh, i tried to bring out everything possible So, sir, as you mentioned, keeping yourself busy so that you don't want to participate in, you know, leg pulling, bureaucracy, or all of those things. But these days, people do talk about the work-life balance in research. What are your thoughts and experiences about that? Well, I can't give much comment about this because 
this is against my i only believe that unless you have a along with researcher you should have a good pr also oh, and um, uh, but i think a good researcher will not have a time to do all these things uh, i very frankly i i never uh, got much time to spend with my children to uh, coach them all those things of course i used to attend them uh, they are all needs if they wish to go to somewhere place and this place for study and this time i used to take them i never used to send them alone that i attended but i never and give any teaching or lesson or nothing that one but in spite of that i think god helped me and my both the children came up very well uh, my son deepak gaur got all the fame in this country got the highest awards uh, possible fna patnagar award all the uh, awards in life sciences he got within seven years in the country in the usc also he was nine years every year he got the prize so i think that that was the god uh, Uh, balance that one. I didn't get much things, uh, but all the was given because I I devoted much more time with my students, rather hundred times more with my students than my own children. Uh, so uh, uh, because I think uh, th- that was my uh, passion. Uh, uh, I never returned from my lab at nine o'clock before nine in the night. Uh, that was my routine at the time i must admit that your students were fortunate enough to have a mentor like you and i'm sure even after watching this video people will change the perception of how they should approach a phd or research in all the different dimensions so now sir we will talk about the monetary part of the struggles which researchers faced as you mentioned for your life building the working table out of the boxes you know pallets out of those and today when covid hit people started acknowledging researchers but there was a, a hope that things might change after covid and still we see the uh, what we say in india and abroad everywhere researchers are not paid well enough according to the generation according to the needs according to so many different things they say that their counterparts their friends like or you know say the comparison comes and it is almost a unanimous uh, thought all around the world that researchers are not paid enough in comparison of equally trained or the degrees even not that much so what are your thoughts about that yes dr raj i fully agree with you what you are saying uh, uh, the time when uh, we started research and also uh, i think the, uh, the researchers or teachers were not paid much also in spite of there was a interest in research uh, they used to this one used to request humble used to pray the professor kindly admit me under your guidance i wish to do research and professor used to say no there is no space there is no bench space for me sir i will work in the night all this thing that that was the time nowadays uh, you, uh, those students who come for research as my son also used to say those who are not getting anything just they have got either they have gone to engineering or they have gone to medical sciences or civil services if they have not got it they have gone for msc program and then there are hardly one or two percent of students are there who are interested in research i am telling not only for just ordinary college i am telling about uh, the college of national and international reputes like iri uh, like um, uh, jnu of course iri is still the competition there because again there were three to four uh and uh, test uh, seats for phd programs also uh, so there is to be but uh, other universities including jnu to get a good students was very very rare difficult those who are really interested in research and of course they are getting good fellowship all these students are getting fellowship all these things but the liking it because uh, a student uh, in other field 
after doing mcom or mba or uh, ca they are much more than the scientists can get same same that is for medical science those doctors are not paid unless they, some famous doctor in the private calls them medical hospitals may be earning very senior doctors otherwise normal doctors are not getting as commensurate to their uh, studies or hard work same is for scientists also they are not paying that and getting for much of course after same pay commission their salary is not too bad eh? but it is not commensurate to the, the person doing same type of work in private organizations mm -hmm. Only the charm in this as a scientist, you are master of your own, you have your own time, whether you are working in the morning or you are working the whole night, you are responsible in your own. But other field, you are not master, you have to work under some other person's supervision. So, uh, how, why the lead, the sense of leadership, as I mentioned, uh, I hear from your words, like you are the master of your own. You decide your yes, working hour, you decide in, your you are, research. You are the master own in, in research only. Yes. Yes. In in research. So this gives you that freedom so that you can fly as much as you want. You can take rest as much as you want, as and when you want. But when the we do talk to researchers from all the ages. So we had researcher celebrity who are just aiming to get a PhD seat. Okay, the master student, and we had researcher celebrities uh, having the conversation with us, like emeritus professor emeritus. We have talked to researchers all around the world, from United States to Africa, and uh, some of the most renowned uh, researchers in India. One thing which comes very often, as you also mentioned, that some of the researchers are different from others because some talk about work-life balance as you mentioned because you enjoyed being in lab with your students and this is the honesty when you mentioned that you spend more time with your students than your with your own children this is something because you loved it and if somebody else wants to or is expected to do the same they say that no, we have our boundaries. The and and that is very important. We do talk about the boundaries also in your research because at the end of the day, everyone is human being and they want to be loved, they want to be cared, they want to be acknowledged. And in field of research, when we say monetary, okay, now improving things are improving for sure. But when it comes about the acknowledgement in general public still researchers are not very well celebrated and as part of our due diligence empowering science foundation believes in breaking the barrier and one of the barrier is celebrating researchers that's how and that's why we started this series so that we can say that okay let's celebrate research whosoever either a master student or a professor emeritus either are doing or have done research, we should celebrate them. That is part of the thing with us. And I want to know your thoughts because you have seen so many countries, different cultures. The way we Indian celebrate research and researchers. Your experiences, sir. Well, in India, uh celebration uh, researchers are not giving any recognition anywhere except in their own uh, community of researchers only and then if they are recognized i think that that is appreciable otherwise outside that one very rarely except a few who has reached the very top position as our late dr ms swaminathan or cna rao or dr apj abdul kalam or like that otherwise uh, a person like me is not known anywhere. Yeah. And the reason being that uh, unless you got some uh, very coveted awards and prizes, which not only depend on your own work, it depends on many factors also. Uh, besides the researcher, you should have a good PR also. This should be there. So, and there's also ability uh, to have a good PR 
is not a, I think, a bad point. You are the one of the quality of the person. If one can keep a balance, then only a, that can. That is not only in India, but that is abroad also. I've seen it, uh, and that even the country like America, unless you have good PR, you cannot even get a good projects grant also. So that is the case here. But the a good researcher, in my opinion, will not be much affected. Only he gets much pleasure satisfaction when one sees that his his or her students are going up, rather going above him or her. And when the students write because of your training. Uh, I am getting this one, or my work which I did under you is appreciated even abroad. Or one gets a good publications. Or in my op own opinion, when I used to used to visit America, many labs, uh, I I used to say I am such, and I used to listen. We don't need any introduction. We you know so you so very well. So that used to be a great satisfaction. I think that was one of the most uh, celebrated uh, award to me to listen like that. So this is one of the things, sir. Yeah. So I, to all the audience, I will say that you might have read papers published by sir. Okay. You might have attended his talks in different part of the world in different scientific meetings, conferences. But today at Research and Celebrity, you have him live here sharing the experience with you. And this is one of the part which we actually aim towards to giving the face because they know you by your name, because they have read your papers, they have followed your research. But when they see the person speaking, it gives a personal touch. And I believe it is very important for all the humans so now, sir, when you mentioned that when you travel all these countries as an expert, people know you by your name. When they see a person of your repute talking to them about the research, what is the first or the most uh, asked question you get from them? Well, uh, uh... Wherever I go, uh, went there, I didn't go as an expert. I went there as a collaborator with research programs with them. And uh, they used to respect my work. They used to like and they, uh, some of the places I uh, used to listen, to, they used to say to my wife, the kind of work, the way the, he works, I cannot do it. Even director of institute was used to, my wife, when she used to meet them somewhere on the way or something like that. Uh, so uh, I had a good, uh, uh, that way got the uh, respect and that was enough for me rather I was not hungry after all those demands I used to work. Uh, I remained uh, working without any consideration for any of the things. I may be a mad person or something like that. Uh, this did not move me anywhere. Uh, uh, the, this one. Uh, so, sir, should, I, I believe that you should have own satisfaction that what you have done it. Yes. You have done honest. Your work is not being challenged by anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, your work is recognized all over the places in your own mm -hmm. uh, The publication which I did in the 60s, they have been our research gate. I get we want the publication that time. And mm -hmm. there are some of the citations are there. Of course, uh, as the materialistic world, I did not get too much recognition. I did not reach to the higher positions and mm -hmm. those things. And uh, I think that was my weakness because I did not used to run after the people to develop a PR and those things. I never disrespected person, but uh, and whoever came in my contact, I used to respect them. But people require nowadays to reach to those levels, some other things also. So I think I like that those qualities but uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, I remain quite contented with my own research also so that was my great satisfaction in my life so we see the self-satisfaction in you yes. as you I, I, and, and I believe that everyone else can also agree with me on that but sir we do like you have mentioned this a lot 
of times in this conversation about the PR, the public relations. Your thoughts or your guidance for the upcoming researchers that how they should be good at communications also, not only in their experiments in the lab. What they should do? I think the present generation is quite uh, clever in this respect. Uh, besides working, they have that art of developing uh, good PR. Uh, the way we were yeah. groomed uh, in my childhood and all those things, we were always uh, uh, advised, or rather scolded, not to talk too much and all these things. Right? So we developed a type of a, a introvert type nature person. Uh, but nowadays that uh, uh, trend is not there. Uh, even to my grandchildren, I, one younger one used to talk too much and make noise. I used to say to my son, never stop him because that is one of the state which he has. So I believe in our business, a good writing and good speaking is the most essential part of this one. And uh, one should be... Uh, now the present generation is totally different than what we were earlier. But, uh, I think that constraint uh, will not be there. As you have seen the, uh, our Pankaj Gupta, hmm? Hmm? He, he is one of the uh, examples of having the good PR. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, sir, why I asked this question was because in current uh, time, what we have seen that PhD students either quit their PhD after spending three to four years in a lab, sometimes even more, or sometimes they do commit suicide also, which should not be happening. How you guide the researchers for that? See, in the search, you require perseverance. Yes. Unless you have that, you want to not enter that field because this is, uh, you get only pleasure for a moment when you get a publication. You get a positive result, but 99% time you may get failure also. So unless you are prepared for that, to repeat your experience again and again, and that depends uh, your guide also. Some guides are very tough, yeah? and uh, emotions, uh, everyone has emotions. And uh, nowadays children, uh, because of suicide and all these things, I would say, you, you require a great tolerance. Uh, uh, Present generation, you have one or two child, which uh, uh, they never, uh, they are pampered children. If they join research, and guide is a tough guide. Uh, uh, I don't say there's a bad guide, but a tough guide. Uh, and so they, they are able to probably not uh, understand the sentiments of the students and emotions. Uh, so they get bad feeling. And, uh, so more about the suicide, I don't think is only one reason. The reason are maybe many more. When one gets frustrated from all kinds of, then maybe suicide, not for one reason. Second, <laughs> a, yes. after three or four years leaving the research, I think that person, uh, student has not got interest in research at all. Yes. And that there, I will say, the disinterest of the candidate from beginning, one of the reasons that one has gone under compulsion to research, there is no other program, so he has joined the research. Or the teacher has not been able to inculcate interest yes. in him or her in science. Mm -hmm. So I consider myself very fortunate whether that I got my all students who are doing, and they were rather excellent, they are doing it. No. I would say not only, except the two students which I feel they got interested, but their own personal reasons or something that they could not pursue. And I don't know what they are doing it, but my all the students we, uh, are doing so well. All, all our professors at this time, all our professors, a few have retired also. And they did very well. They, good, they sir, did some good research there. Sir, we so that, that spoke was the about research. That is because they got interest in research, again, just like me. Uh, they never thought for any other line of the research after doing this. So we spoke on student side till now. Yes. Now yes. I would like to ask your thoughts, suggestion and recommendation to so-called these 
tough PIs, as you mentioned, there is nothing like bad researcher, bad student or bad PI. But what you can suggest to those uh, tough PIs who are listening to this conversation of ours, that how they should acknowledge or deal with the student when they see that they are going through a tough time? Well, I don't blame the tough guys. I will say rather I will love to work under a tough guy because there you are able to learn. You are you get uh, uh, not only the way one does research, but how to deal the things. Discipline is most important. Uh, otherwise, with goody goody person, uh, you may not be able to learn unless you are working as I was working. Uh, my guide used to work where you are working so hard and this thing. Used to place a nice, very nice person, but uh, and I consider him only that he was a good person with whom I can discuss every research aspect. With that freedom, I could learn much more my 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 own self. Uh, uh, rather, he used to acknowledge with my own students that uh, he taught me a bit, but uh, he himself learned everything. So, uh, uh, tough guide is not bad. I I would love to work under a tough guide. Only point I will say that the researcher who is taken as a student should not be taken only by his academic record. One should go for aptitude test. Unless one has aptitude, irrespective of the marks, academic record of the candidate, if one is interested in research, research, one should be given chance to join research. If one does not have aptitude, there is no point in admitting a student for research. And that is aptitude plus the, the ability to work hard under stress. And as uh, of course you are telling and you have repeated that uh, one is a master born. But the pressure of work in research is uh, your, your own pressure on research is that you are not able to take a leave. You, cannot, you are not able to take off. You can of course you stop your as your wish. But the pressure, your own pressure, work pressure is that much, you are not able to take leave at all. So your, uh, so this is, research is not only bad of roses, it is a tough time. And if you are especially working in the biological sciences, where the perishable material one is doing, it is not in physical sciences, then you can stop it and you can do it tomorrow. So in many of the experiments. Yeah. So sir, then now the question comes about the dealing with the stress which comes with the research how do we should deal with it your thoughts on like how we deal with this stress because as you mentioned about the hard work stress some people are better at stress tolerance just like some other crops some are not so good with that. So for the tough times in research, what are your thoughts, recommendations, suggestions? I think the, the supervisor uh, should be tough in getting the work done, but his or her relation with the student should be just like their own son or her own daughter. Yes. I know two students in my department who were not direct my student for PhD. They, I taught them in one department. They were, so their supervisor was some, someone else. And because of their grading, uh, they wanted to leave the research in between. And because IRE system was based on American uh, system of uh, examinations, and they were not good. so. Had they left at that time, they were uh, they would have not been anywhere. So someone told me this, this boy is doing like this or something. Like that. So I just took them by the home, uh, had a dinner with them, to my wife, and, and just pursued it. And don't do anything and continue. And uh, just by persuasion and all things, and they both of them did very well. One of them retired as a professor. In Pajabad University, other was I think still in America, Dr. Mahanti. Hmm. So that is the one has to see these emotions, how one gets them, because that type of emotions depends on person to person. One is very hard, hardy, otherwise very, very emotional. So 
the chairman or scientists, colleagues should take care about it uh, so that nothing uh, goes uh, against this candidate. Uh, uh, so that is a, a one, one requires a personal touch with the experience also. Yeah, one may be tough with the take, you know, getting work done or training, but training is always, always hard. But otherwise, from core of the heart, one should be very kind and very affectionate with his own students. Absolutely. And this sounds like every mentor should be like coconut, very hard at the shell, very it should, firm. It should, it should be coconut, absolutely. When it comes yeah, to yeah. get the work done, because training, you are training this new generation of researchers. If you don't give it all the hard time, they will perish later or sooner. But if you have trained them well, with special that uh, human emotion touch, which you mentioned, sir, that is also very important for all the mentors. So this is not only for the students, but for the mentors who are watching this. So, sir, now we are walking towards the... Uh, I, I wish to add, add, add here one thing, which is yes, please. hard for some other students. Uh, I never used to say to my students, uh, to my staff, uh, that you should be in come here time on this thing. This is your own wish. I never know where are you standing, to whom you are talking, or you are wasting your time and all this thing. You are totally freedom. I want to work output. That's all. Yes. Whether you do in the day, you do in the night, you do in the evening, whatever you do, you have to, you are responsible for that. The same work I do. But whether the boss is there or not, it never affected me. Uh, mm -hmm. Same, I just tell you at, at the moment, uh, the experience which I have. So my secretary, a, 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 usually it's time is starting because the institute where I'm at the moment is advisor. So nine o'clock and uh, uh, up to five o'clock. Her mother is admitted in the hospital and uh, some uh, very urgent work is there going on. So I've just given full freedom. This is this work you have to do. No one will be able to do that. Uh, what time you go, how you do it, this is your responsibility. Whether you are coming or not, whether you are doing at home or not, whether you come half day or this, you have to finish it. So I think she is doing so wonderfully, managing both the ends. So there is no point in going absolutely hard hardship. One has to be a human being while treating other person. Yes, sir. This is very important when you are working in an organization, especially uh, at later stages in the life when you are mature and you are responsible for a group, not only your group but for the entire association or the institution so sir now we are talking about the last few minutes of the conversation it is our pleasure to have you at this platform at researcher celebrity for our 100th episode i want to know your thoughts about the series of researcher celebrity how you think we should make it different for the general audience so that they can acknowledge research, they can respect research and the most important part, every single researcher should celebrate their own research. Uh, the, uh, I think the celebration uh, would be much useful if the general so public non-scientists hello yes sir are you able to listen to me yes yes sir we can uh, hear you uh. uh, non-scientists uh, can also understand the importance of your work mm -hmm. uh, my experience and as well as experience of my other colleagues also uh, in any institute any organization as administrative staff excuse me non-scientific staff never appreciate the work or the way scientists are working. Yeah. Uh, always, especially I will say administrative staff, a researcher, young researcher of 30 years is doing much more salary than a, a administrative staff member, clerk. And they always come to, oh, and this man is working only two hours, three hours, taking lectures like that. And I am uh, the kind of the salary which I am getting as my retirement, this fellow is getting me starting also. There is always a internal conflict between the two. 
which I have experienced, even I am to experienced even today with my other, you know, some of the staff members that the difficulty and other administrative staff, this internal feeling is there. And so unless the administrative staff is also make aware the kind of the work these scientists or researchers or educationists are doing it, how important is there. Don't think that they are working only for two hours, but for taking a lecture in a day, they have a one, lec a one hour lecture on a particular day. They work for three days or a week yes. to prepare that lecture. True. So, so unless that kind of the awareness among them, uh, I think the, our society will not improve it. I just tell you my own experience. Uh, uh, one of our directors, uh, as soon, uh, uh, Professor S. K. Sina, you must have heard his name. Mm -hmm. When he became director, he started a program in institute, National Institute Seminar. He is part of divisional se seminars for the students. This is the Institute Seminar by a, a, by the scientist. And he has seen my field experiments he used to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, from my side, it has gone. Uh, we we can hear you, sir, and we can see the video. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he suggested my name that he has, you have to give a spectrum lecture, your work presentation. I went uh, and after lecture was over, the, the security officer, uh, he was also sitting in that audience. He told me that I could understand what the science is there. Mm -hmm. And he could question. So I, I believe unless, uh, and I for that reason, I used to suggest to my heads and director also, that there should be some open day Yes. Uh, where the lectures by scientists should be there and these administrative staff should sit there to listen and understand what the scientist is doing. They, yes. uh, they present their work in a simple language so that these people can understand and know the importance of the science and their work also. Then the change will be there in the society. Absolutely. Able to understand that what the scientist is doing is irrespective of one especially institute like agriculture institute you'll find scientists either in the field or library and these people say oh we never find scientists on their table bench yeah yeah no i agree this, this is a visionary of, part, yes uh, that type of feeling they have unless that improves they will not give a, a, a full support to them unless i agree it is a coherent work on the full support uh, I have seen, I have visited the Institute of uh, uh, this um, Bark mm -hmm. and the Institute of one of the Mathematics Institute at Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. uh, there I just talked to some of the administrative officers. They used to say that the scientists are working and we are all the, all the time with them. Whatever they need, we support them. Yes. ISRO is, uh, ISRO is uh, doing very well because they have full administrative support. Mm -hmm. the scientists want, they do it. But other places is not like that. And Absolutely. That type of attitude, the other colleagues, other staff members also have. Mm -hmm. And that type of feeling they can have only when they are aware how important the work the scientists is doing. Absolutely. That awareness is required to change the attitude. I agree, sir. So now uh, we will say to all the audience, the conversation is surpassed its time but this is something when you do talk intense science and various aspects of research the pointers which comes today from uh dr god is like be honest to your research respect the freedom which you have in your research and the most important part is there should be no spoon feeding in any part of the research when you are doing it be passionate about your research. Enjoy the research as you want. And with this, we'll thanks Dr. God for sharing the journey and the experience with us. And to all of you, the all the audience, I'll say that stay tuned for another episode of Researcher Celebrity and 
keep enjoying your research because that's what makes you happy and that's why you are a researcher and we will keep our celebration for researcher celebrity on and on and on thank you very much sir and to all the other audiences